good morning students this is the fifth lecture on our series on marxism in literary theory if you have not watched the earlier videos in this series you can simply check the description below i have created a separate playlist for you to understand this topic and now in this video we are going to talk about one of the famous inventions that has ever happened in theater and drama this phenomenal invention in artistic movement is known as epic theater the founding figure of this epic theater is bertolt brecht there have been many questions from this particular author in the past using net exam so all the plays written by this author is as important as his invention the epic theater for example there was a question in ugc net 2013 examination the question was which one of the brecht's work was intended to lampoon the conventional sentimental music but the public lapped up the works sentiment and missed the humor so the answer to this question was three penny opera for now the play three penny opera is not a point of discussion for us in this video rather we are going to look at what is epic theater and what are the aspects of epic theater that one should remember as a student of english literature so before moving on to this concept or invention of this epic theater let's try to understand the relation of brecht with marxism bertolt brecht had a genuine interest in economics and he detested the bourgeoisie class from the beginning of his literary career during 1920s when he was in berlin he was working on a play titled wheat while doing research work of his play he met many brokers and workers to understand how the business of wheat market works surprise Surprisingly, not a single worker or broker was able to tell him how the wheat market works, and due to this, he left this play wheat unfinished. At that time, he tried to understand how economy and business works. Now he got so much interested in the subject economics that he started reading Karl Marx, and that was the moment of enlightenment for him. He became interested in analyzing the society through economical lens. Later on, he also remarked that when I read Marx's Capital, I understood my place and described Marx as the only spectator for my play. Now here we see the influence of Marx on his invention epic theater. In the work Das Kapital, Karl Marx has tried to explain the difference between appearance and reality. For example, the commodity we use in everyday life is tagged as branded. If you want to buy sports shoes, you consider purchasing it from Nike. Whereas if you are in need of cell phone, you consider Apple as a brand for you to satisfy your needs. Now according to Karl Marx, these brands are just the appearance, not the reality. In the name of brands, we have been sold the illusions, not the reality. Everything from music, art, songs is just an illusion. They are not the reality. Instead, they are just trying to sell some kind of product to us. If the bourgeoisie class do not have something to sell, they sell us the ideologies. They sell us the belief systems. They sell us false consciousness through products, arts, music, education, etc. To understand the reality, one should not get absorbed in what is being presented to us. For instance, the Aristotle catharsis is based on the fact that audience should get involved in the play or drama which is performed on the stage so that they can feel the catharsis. Now here comes the role of epic theater. This epic theater is against the Aristotle mode of presenting the art. Epic theater simply says that if you get involved in any drama or movie or a play, then the bourgeoisie class through the medium of art or play is going to transfer the false consciousness or ideologies in you. The epic theater suggests that audience must remain some distance between themselves and the play which is being performed at the stage the audience should not get absorbed in the play there must be some kind of wall between the audience and the author the audience must not get emotionally attracted to the play which is being performed at the stage because whatever presented in the form of movies or plays or dramas is all illusion nothing is reality according to epic theater all these plays or dramas or novels are just trying to put the ideologies in your brain all of them are just appearance not the reality and this appearance is served by the bourgeoisie to the working class people so this epic theater tries to make an effect on the spectator where the spectator finds himself getting distance from the actual performance of the play so now i hope that you have understood that epic theater is based on the concept of appearance and reality here in these theaters the audience is trained to that everything in the society is an illusion and not the reality One interesting thing about the author is that he kept on experimenting with different types of theater throughout his life. Just like Shakespeare used the material from Homer and give it a dramatic form, Bertolt Brecht did the same with the existing theater. Just like Shakespeare, he broke away the existing conventions of how the plays should be. Shakespeare did not follow the unities of action, time and space. In the same way, Bertolt Brecht broke away the catharsis of Aristotle and promoted the idea of drama as an illusion. Now let's see the top 3 techniques that is used 
used in epic theater. Number one is epic theater tries to break the wall between the audience and the actors. Here the actors keep on reminding them that they are just watching the play and not the real life. These actors suddenly freeze on the stage in order to give time to the audience to think about what is being portrayed to them. These all actors make sure that the audience must not get connected with them emotionally. Because a man swayed by the emotions cannot find the difference between true and false, reality and appearance. And number three technique is the props and lightings used on the stage is reduced to minimum. Often the actors use the props for multiple tasks. For instance, a chair will work as a car as well as horse. So in short, minimum prop is used. An interesting thing about Brett is that he has been continuously chastised by the critics for being a businessman. His critic Michael Billington once wrote that Brett was a shameless magpie who stole from everyone, often without acknowledgement. So with this, we have to come to the end of this video. I hope you found the video worth your time. If you are new to this channel and have not subscribed to this channel yet, then don't forget to subscribe the channel for more updates on English literature. So that's it for this video. Thank you.